I'd like to ask you the relationship between breast cancer and six different things. So let me name six different things and tell me what, if there's a link between that and breast cancer. Number one, antiperspirants. Number two, microwaves. Number three, pesticides, fertilizers, herbicides. Number four, x-rays. Number five, antibiotics. And number six, tricolcin, which is, um, I guess in like hand, the, the hand soaps to, uh, that people wash to make you antibacterial soaps. So those six things, can you tell us if there is some relation with that in breast cancer? Run over that list briefly again, okay. please, Steve. So antiperspirants, one, microwaves, two, um, pesticides, fertilizers, herbicides, three, x-rays, four, antibiotics, five, and tricolcin, which I believe is the antibacterial thing in like sanitizers for hand soap and things like that. Got it, thank you. Uh, antiperspirants, we're back to the lymphatic system. Uh, many have um, aluminum in them, but just not perspiring. Pers perspiration is a way to get rid of toxins. And so we're decreasing our detoxification system, its ability to detoxify. So that doesn't sound healthy. So antiperspirants, and especially right there, women more so than men because the lymphatics from the breast, especially the outer quadrants of the breast, go right through the armpit. So antiperspirants are not a good idea and, and, and are a link to cancer. Um, antibiotics, I, I want to really go off on antibiotics. Antibiotics are a primary cause of breast cancer and disease in general. Uh, antibiotics are, are awesome if you're in a life-threatening situation and you really need antibiotics. I'm guessing 90 to 95 percent of antibiotic prescriptions are unnecessary. And what they do is they kill up. Bacteria are our friends. Actually, we are parasites. There's about 10, 100 trillion of them, and there's only about 10 trillion of us, more or less. People diverge a little bit on the numbers, but we're outnumbered about 10 to 1 by our bacteria. And, and so we're parasites off of our bacteria and their products. So we want to have the best bacteria we can have to be parasitic on. And, and so antibiotics kill off the good bacteria, the beneficial bacteria, and promote the growth of fungus and bad bacteria. And those are not good things for us to be getting our nourishment from. So we know that, for instance, women that have, I think, four courses of antibiotics by their 18th birthday have a three-fold increase in breast cancer. Like what? There's just actually been papers published in the last few years that show that the, the, the ducts of the breast actually have their own little biome, their own bacteria that live happily in there and are beneficial. Antibiotics kill those off allowing bad bacteria and or fungus to flourish and therefore the increase in breast cancer rate. Uh, and so you're killing off the healthy bacteria and it's pretty disastrous. It's probably a cause, a, a significant cause of chronic fatigue, probably a significant cause of fibromyalgia because another thing that antibiotics do is there's a little thing inside of our cells that's called the mitochondria. They're the power plants. So we have these central organs. We have a central nervous system, a cardiovascular system that pumps blood every place, a central detoxification system, the liver. We don't have a, a central system uh, for that. So that ha energy production occurs on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, and the little energy plants are called mitochondria. For all the world, a mitochondria looks just like a bacteria. It has its own DNA, its own little cell wall. And so it's a, if you would, an intracellular bacteria. Antibiotics kill off the mitochondria too. So it's like being in a city when there's a brownout. The power just goes down and nothing works properly because there's not the proper power. That power shortage is a primary cause of cancer. Uh, when the cells can't use oxygen in the normal way and use their, the full source of energy, it kind of has a brownout and it kicks in a, an alternate energy system called the Emden-Meyerhoff pathway. 
And that's what cancer cells use to get their energy. So antibiotics are probably a primary cause of cancer, certainly a cause of breast cancer, a cause of many sorts of dysbiosis and disease in the body, allowing fungi to flourish and many other things. So um, microwaves are not good for us. We've known that for a long time. Uh, so let, let's broaden that a little bit. Electromagnetic frequency is not healthy for us. From, from our biome to our cells disrupting, the cells talk to each other all the time. Our cells are in constant communication. Uh, even the bacteria in our bowel are talking to our brain. So you eat sweets for a few days and then stop and see what happens. Those bacteria that you've been nourishing are going to send to the brain, say, send me sugar. <laughs> Truthfully, pay attention. You're eating healthy, and then the healthy bacteria are going to send healthy messages to the brain. So there's constant communication everywhere in our bodies, from bacteria to us, from between our own cells. Microwave and EMF disrupts that cellular communication in so many ways. Uh, X-rays, uh, a primary cause of cancer, we've known that since the invention of X-rays. Madame Curie died of cancer, Rentgen uh, died of cancer, all of the, the people that worked with X-rays before they knew to protect themselves from X-rays died of cancer. X-rays cause cancer and uh, leading cause of cancer in America, probably by 2020, it's estimated that it will be medical industry from antibiotics, from x-rays, we're passing out CT scans like candy. And those are massive doses of radiation. Radiation is cumulative. Every one you get increases your, your risk of cancer for life. Uh, so x-rays are, are not good. We've known that for a long time. Uh, the the, the tricloc, uh, how did you say that, Stephen? Tri Tricolson? Yeah, it, tough word for me. My tongue doesn't wrap around that well. It was invented for surgeons to, because it's, it it's a bacteriocide. It will kill bacteria. It's gotten broad use. Uh, I could, it has a distinct smell. I smelled it uh, today when I flew in to JFK. I could smell it in the, the hand wash soap in the, the, the bathroom there. Um, it kills healthy bacteria. It is a toxin. It's an endotoxin. Uh, it's hard on your liver, hard on your brain. Uh, so it's, it's not a good thing. It, there's no good trials on it to say that it's safe. Uh, we do this grass thing, generally recognized as safe. If it hasn't proven to kill you uh, readily, then it's generally recognized as safe, and they put it in things without ever proving that it's safe or, or, or acceptable. Uh, did I miss any? Uh, no. Nope. I think good. I got them all. So. Let me just... Um, oh, and pesticides. 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 I did miss pesticides. So Thank you. Chemicals, uh, needless to say, most of them are untested re re relative to uh, damage to the body, uh, toxicity of the liver, kidneys, brain. Uh, many are neurotoxins. Uh, we're, we're very aware of glyphosate, of the, how toxic it is. Now with GMO foods, they're actually putting pesticides in foods, and so you're eating the... And, and we're a bug. We're a big bug. It's made to keep the bugs from eating the food, but we're a big bug. We're, we're a dynamic biological system. And so it damages our systems too, not just, not just the bug that's supposed to be eating the corn or soybean or whatever. So uh, these are not healthy for us. You need to be eating non-GMO food. You need to be eating organic food. Uh, you need to clean your water because most uh, metropolitan areas, the water is full of pesticides and chemicals. Uh, millions of these chemicals out there now, and, and most of them aren't tested. And so we need to be purifying those. Um, uh, activated charcoal is a great way to take most, uh, most of those chemicals out, but you need to be active, be, be very proactive about protecting yourself from the environment, from, from water. I mean, they put chlorine in the water. I read in the newspaper a few years back where the American Association of Water Treatment Specialists or whatever were meeting. And they said it from the stage that they knew that chlorine was causing cancer. They knew chlorine was causing disease. 
This was by the people that are putting it in our water. <laughs> they just didn't know what to do about it. You see, they, they can't send the water there and let you get uh, dysentery. Uh, you know, if there's a break in the water line, it gets bacteria in there, they've got to kill that. Ozone can sterilize water, but then it comes out of the water, so it doesn't stay in the water all the way to your faucet. So I understand why they do it. That doesn't mean that it's healthy or good for us. Uh, so chemicals are are basically very bad for us. Avoid them as much as possible and protect yourself from them in every way that you can, from things that you put on your skin to the air that you breathe to the water that you drink to the food that you eat. So every way that you can, protect yourself from chemicals. Let me just follow up on that with a few more quick little things. Um, you all flew here. When you fly, do you are you willing to go through the airport, the full body scanner, number one, when you go to the dentist, do you get x-rays, number two? And number three, do you, are you okay to swim in a swimming pool that's been cleaned with chlorine? Those three points. Well, I always opt out for the scanner. Uh, it, it's actually kind of a, you know, they do the pat down. I kind of think of it as a lymphatic massage. <laughs> so I've kind of gotten to where I'm into it. Okay, yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> it actually helps uh, decrease my stress level and, and I, I've, I'm just into it now. Yeah, go for the, go for the pat down. <laughs> I was pre -T -P -S -A, what, TSA pre-check today, so I didn't get the pat down. I missed it. <laughs> but uh, no, I never go through the scanners. So that's my response to the scanners. And there, there were two other questions there. Uh, yeah, so the scanners, do you get, um, do you get dental x-rays? And do you swim in a swimming pool that's been cleaned with chlorine, which most pools are? Well, the, the x-rays, we've talked about them briefly. Uh, x-rays are probably overutilized. I'm not a dentist. I don't speak well to that. Um, if you're going to get an x-ray, let's go at it from a different angle. You should probably eat your little basket of blueberries this morning, that morning, and take lots of antioxidants to mitigate any radiation damage. That's true for any x-ray. Uh, before you get an x-ray in any facility, they should have a little a bottle of antioxidants that you should take there to help mitigate the damage. That's so easily done in good studies, published peer-reviewed studies, showing that you can mitigate the damage. But they wouldn't dare let you think that you could be harmed by an x-ray, so they aren't about to do that. Uh, so um, avoid x-rays whenever possible. I maybe seven or eight years ago I had dental x-rays for uh, I, where they were putting a, a cap on but certainly haven't had any in the last five or six years. Okay. Um. Swimming pool. That's a tough one. Exercise may mitigate the damage that the chlorine might do. There's a lot of kids out there swimming and we aren't seeing a lot of diseases, but we've got a lot of things coming at us. Uh, if I were going to swim on a regular basis, I would take a nice dose of antioxidants between, before I went in that pool. I prefer to swim in a saltwater pool, which has a lower level of chlorine. Um, if you can certainly swim in fresh water or the ocean, that would be much preferable. So chlorine is a killer. It kills bacteria, it kills cells. Chlorine is, is a toxic chemical. I mean, there's no way to slice that. There's no way to do an in run on that. So if you're going to swim in a pool, try to mitigate the damage with antioxidants.